about a Vitality maybe turning from Excel? Well, I do think the Vitality have a little bit more of a scaling composition, mainly just because they've gone for the Victor and the Zeri. We know they're both massive late game threats. So whenever you have a range support in the form of Renata, you're just right. going to have a With little... that bailout, full stacks and passive Akazi there, continuing to chase forward. You see Mickey and Patrick now all of a sudden respecting the range, the ability for them to chase, especially with Mickey's mana pool dropping low, and Mark Coon potentially the first to make a move. They know that there's actually very little vision on this side of the map. That's a pullback onto Mickey, flashes away to safety. Here comes Mark Coon, puts the bite down for first blood once more. Cause he's trying to chase back, and Patrick sidesteps everything. The bailout by so much time, and finally goes down. Double kill to Mark Coon in game two for XL. And for all we talked about, oh, Olaf's great. Well, the first few levels play out, Open the opportunity for Markoon to punish. Let's keep that in mind. As the Vitality players have maybe presented a target. Money, but Excel are actually looking to attack this bot lane once again. They know well, all the summoners That's are back so up. Rumble. They don't care. Round up, round up, round up. Here comes Nuketuck and Markoon. Jump over the wall for Kazi, but the Thunder is splitting sky. Kazi stays alive as the flash comes out and an overload to the face. Look, that was a lot invested. A number but of is... situations around, and he's a player that in these clutch situations often comes up. Big. Maybe that graphics what happens when uh, Nukadok gets hit by the Renata roll. Uh, <laughs> just spin it that way. I love that as Markoon will jump on top of Perks. The bailout buys a couple extra seconds. Markoon is absolutely dominating Vitality for now. Finn will get himself not against the wall, spinning slash forwards, give him a mocking shout, and Bloodlust fully stacked for gigantic heal. I'm gonna But he permanently dived mid lane on this volley bear over and over and over again. And this level of aggression is not something we've always gotten to see from Arkoon, but it's great to see it back once again. Stormbringer, Stormbringer, Stormbringer! Alfari flashes and hops and the rumble, rumble, rumble from Markoon. That's a big chomp down. The shout that is mocked onto Alfari and that's an instant death. Undying Ridge wasn't clicked. Finn, you got to hit the button, buddy. you got to hit the button. Two for one in favor of Vitality. And for the first time in the first two games, Vitality, they react appropriately in time and they find themselves on the board. Oh, board. man. Take a look at that hostile takeover holding Nuketuck in place. But it's not going to be enough, not enough follow-up, and Vitality not ready just... And they are setting themselves up for later into the game. They're, all, they're not at such a massive deficit that they're too worried yet, but let's see if XL can make that deficit bigger. Oh, man. Dive top, dive top. Alfari this time around. They're sipping in three players. The Undying Range was found. And Nuketuck with the help of the Realm Walk. Not going to be able to get the assist, but is there see, any... It's, actually, it's Vitality who actually have some deep awards around the top side of that jungle, and they're using it for self-made to have this extra ability to affect things. Right now, Alfari will have some backup this time round. Selfmade stepping forward. Finn, no ultimate available to him, not against the wall. That was just flawless. Selfmade Alfari pick up the Secure kill. Secure their third dragon of the game, and now they're looking to collapse on a rise. I mean, they are indeed, but Exile is still pushing up in the top lane. Nuketuck is trying to use the round loop to safety, and he does. Hostile takeover does not find its The top. gold lead is now extended to 4,000. Five towers to three. It has been at the cost of that third dragon. And Markoon and Finn are looking to get some revenge on Alfari, who's about to gnar out. He's got flash available and a lot of support coming in. Nuketuck jumps right into the face of Perks, flash up the wall for Alfari. There's a fight inside the Baron Pit as well. Finn uses the Undying Rage to stay alive in the Corona Shift. Correction, the bell, I think it was there, bringing Patrick back to life. Now all of a sudden, that's one kill onto Mickey, another onto Finn, and it's Excel that's been routed and have been wrecked. Nuketuck, no Realm Warp this time round, gets taken down, and Vitality cleanly pick up three kills. And for such a long passage of play, they weren't trying to look for the direct engagement, and when it finally comes to it, Vitality find a huge win here, and they might get them the Baron after. What what happened inside the Baron pit? I completely missed that as I was focusing in the top lane. Well, the fight was so spread out that while there was a big engagement with TPs being invested, it was Mickey and Patrick trying to survive against Selfmade. Oh, Selfmade was able man. to pop the ultimate out from Mickey, and then Kazi joins the fray and picks up that initial kill onto Mickey as well. But three quick kills off the back of XL trying to force something on the map. Vitality respond well. They get the Perks has TP'd for the Dragons twice in a row. They're starting to clear out the vision. And if you look in the bottom lane, Perks is now pushed bot. Nuketuck will be able to find a root handshake backwards, forced to flash over the wall. Kazi continues to chase forward, and Mark Coon's holding onto the ulti. Finn now jumping onto Perks. Undying Rage has been used, oh. trying to get those crits. Finn's now running for his life. Perks and Lebrov are low. The rest of XL running for their lives. The Death Rocket finds one, and it is at least a reply. One for one thus far. 
So, I mean, said you can't play around side lanes, but Finn did manage to find something against the head, and the fight continues. Chrono Shift is still available, it's going to be needed, it's not used early enough! Patrick was too far away, he's taken down, and Markun will follow shortly, just after the Chrono Shift, it took by some time going golden. One, two more kills for Vitality, Markun's got a big bite, but gets gnawed against the wall, and Vitality, in three minutes, turn this game completely around. They have a thousand gold lead, they have a kill lead, and they're about to get themselves a soul. There it is, that's okay. Yeah. It's not quite the even 5v5, but Ooh. it's the even larger fight, which, of course, Vitality really swings for the fences on. Nightmare, that soul's gonna be remaining. XL needs to be very, very cautious in how they come back at this Trindamir. Once again, a little bit caught out. I mean, Venus, you're talking a bit about it. How it'll fit into this comp, and can it play side? And right now, it's just been jumped on by the Busy Bees. And kill will be secured by Perks with that Death Ray over the wall. And push out and then collapse on the mid lane. They can't do that. It's Vitality that's doing that to them. So XL have to run it straight down the mid lane. Running, running, running. Waiting for it. Makun is just <laughs> simply not able to close the distance. Self-made instead. He's going to ghost up. Stands on top of the Flame Chompers. And XL been able to disengage for now. Self-made running forward. Look at the speed. Running into the XL backline. Head on. Nothing can stop him. Ragnarok and Ragnarol over XL as Alfari's gonna gnaw out and chuck a boulder into Mickey's face. The tower will be the target the inhibitor follow. His name is Self-Made and he goes where he pleases, <laughs> Quick Shot. It does not matter what stands in his way. He will run straight through it and Vitality will tear through the lineup of XL and bring us to 1-1. They absolutely will. The minions are pouring into the base. It's a five versus three. And it doesn't feel like XL can do anything about it. Markun escapes with a sliver of health. Burning, burning, burning! And it's Perks that picks up the kill, the 14th of the game. The minions have been cleared out. All kudos yet to XL to at least stall. They waited to get their item spikes. They once again had control of the Dragon Pit. And as uh, Nymeria so eloquently put it, XL is simply existing in this world. That's Nukta jumping onto Perks. There's a lot of damage gone out, but it is going to be, in fact, Maku that's traded first. Kazi gets himself a second. Mickey's running for his life. The Chrono Shift available. He uses it on himself. And you never, ever want to be in a team fight where Zillion's ulting himself. One, two, three, four members down. Nukta the last man standing. Oh, and XL, they try and use that X Factor. The Rail Mob, everything that can go a little bit awry, is just not enough. Not enough at all. Vicious Strikes, so much damage coming out. That was close. That the was red buff. <laughs> Oh, Selfmade goes where he pleases. Alfari is going to try and pick up the last under the tower. Doesn't matter. The first Nexus turret falls. The second will immediately respond. Vitality bathing in the glory of game number two. Having a little bit of fun playing with their food, as I would expect with these players. Raccoon's going to step forward once more. And finally, Kazi turns his attention to the Nexus. That's one more kill. Nuketuck taken out. Kazi will pad his stats once more, and the series is one to one. I do think there's question marks to be had for the early game, and how can Vitality contain Marku? Two games in a row, he's been able to find advantages for Exile. I think, though, that we are seeing a trend where the games are just inherently going long, and it seems that...